Hello everyone. It's Friday and I'm Barb and you're in my studio. It's it's a good day. It's drama free Friday. Yes, it is. Hello, Dorothy. So you got a gypsy doll that Carol made you. We were chatting just before I hit the start button and Dorothy was telling me that Carol that magical touch she goes by carol tmt i believe or that magical touch but it's spelled with a k magical has a k in it on youtube um she made her a doll a gypsy doll so that's cool hello steven hi annette hello auntie michael jz good to see you steven good to see you hey nancy um hello jill Nancy, we've been missing you, too. It's a good thing you're back. I was getting worried about you, so I'm glad you're back. Um, hello, Sylvia and Alice. Hey, Alice, good to see you. Hi, Q. I'm Margaret, sorry, I get you confused with Q, because I see the Q in front of your name, Margaret. My apologies. Hello, Michelle, you have a day off for days off. That's great. Hi, Deborah. Hello, Sandy. Nice to see you. Hey, Vicki. Roll call. <laughs> Hi, Bonnie. Yes, roll call. It's the Romper Room roll call. So it's great to have everybody here. I'm so happy you're here. Um, is it Allie? I hope. If I'm not saying your name right, um, just put it in the chat phonetically. Except for Linda McAllister. I know how to say Linda. Okay, Linda when every time I say that, she puts in Linda, so I get it right. But I do know how to do Linda. <laughs> hey, Lori. Hey, Dana. Good to see you. Oh, there she is. There's I'm talking about Linda McAllister, and she shows up right there in the chat. <laughs> I'm giving her, I'm giving her trouble. I'm talking smack about her, and there she is. She shows up. Happens every time. I tell you. Watch. I'll start talking smack about the technical department, and he'll show up too. <laughs> Sunny South Carolina. That is good, Dana. We are glad for that. Um, oh, good. Good, Sandy. And I understand what you mean. I understand what you mean. Taking care of anybody who's who's uh, been through a tough time. Yeah, that can get, get stressful, can't it? For certain. Before and after it becomes stressful. Yes. Hey, Barbara Clark. Good to see you. The romper room Barbara's here. That's good. We can start now. <laughs> Nancy said she had withdrawal and was watching last week's stream to compensate. Okay, good. Well, there's plenty of things. There's plenty of bazillion hours here on YouTube for you to watch. Believe me. Hello, Shirley. Karen. Hey. Allie, nobody ever gets it right the first time. I don't. Don't ask me why I did because I usually mess up everybody's names. Good. I'm going to write it down just so I don't forget. Now, that means I have to I have to be able to find my little piece of paper, but <laughs> so far so good. Uh, I'm back to pretty much normal. I'd say I'm 98%. Maybe scooching up to 99. Yeah, I feel I feel really good today. My uh <coughs> yeah, that's right. Then normal doesn't live here. That's true. But it's more normal. More normal lives here. Oh, thanks, Nancy. I'm going to show them today. Hey, Emma. Good to see you. I hope you're doing well. I know. I need a little black book. But then I just, all you'd see me doing is flipping pages in my book. So, so piece of paper works fine, actually. Yeah, it works fine. Hello, Rowesta. I do feel better. I do feel much better. It was a little bit of a... Apparently, I'd been going down for a while and didn't realize it. <laughs> you guys didn't tell me. No, really. Um, I don't expect anyone to tell me how I feel. In fact, if people tell me how I feel, I usually go like, really? <laughs> anyway, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm back to normal. Hey, got paint in, my paint in my hair. Claire, good to see you. I haven't seen you in a long time. <clears throat> I 
Jillian. Nice to see you too. Claire, I hope you're doing well. I just haven't seen you in so long any place, so it's nice to see you. I do see your YouTube videos from time to time. Uh, Claire, or uh, Got Paint in My Hair has a YouTube channel. There's several people on here that have YouTube channels. Hi, Nancy. Oh, it's your first time, Nancy Laura. It's your first time to be here live. Great. Welcome. <laughs> Barbara Clark says last week she was inspired to finally finish her journal page with the four graces. Odie, Vern, Harriet, Hannah, and Hillary. <laughs> those are, <laughs> those are, uh, those are my, the names of my fun faces, rubber stamps. Um, my mother's name was Grace. Her mother's name was Grace. My sister's, one of my sister's names is Grace, and her daughter is Grace. So we truly have the four graces in, uh, in our family. So that was, that was always an interesting thing when you'd run into a statue of, it seems like there was one, I don't know if it was the four or the three or something, I don't know. Anyway, we got my mom to pose with it, and my dad, of course, took pictures of her, you know. It was fun. Of course, they didn't have too much on, so that, that was another story. Clara says she's been super busy and she needs more hours in the day. Well, here, here, don't we all? Oh, Vicki, your mom's name is Grace. How cool. Um, yeah, Jill, they are on there. If you haven't received them, you should be getting them at any moment. Um, I think I got them out on Tuesday. So I hope you have a good time with them. Sandy says, my face looked as lovely as ever. Well, <laughs> I'll pay you later, Sandy. <clears throat> she wouldn't have guessed I had trouble brewing beneath the calm surface. <laughs> Hi, Dar. Hi, Gabrielle. Sheila, nice to see you. Hey, Miss Allie. Yvonne, good to see you. Carol's Makeover. I have not, I'm not familiar with your name, so welcome. Hi, Cindy. You need this Friday. Good. That's great. There's Linda with a Y. I am really glad. Um, let's make a mess. Dawn. Hey, Dawn. Oh, her grandma's name is Grace and her kitty is Gracie. Yeah. Well, you're welcome to stay as long as you can. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Miss Allie? No. You had to bring up the ugly woman, didn't you? You just had to do it. There's lots of people in the chat that don't know anything about the ugly woman, and here you are bringing her up. You know what that means. You know I'm going to have to go drag out that old ugly thing. <clears throat> no, the ugly, the ugly woman is not getting painted today. So, anyway, we just, if you're watching, if you're watching the recording, I spend the first 10, 15 minutes just chatting with the viewers, because after that, I don't often get to, I try to watch the chat, sometimes it gets going pretty fast and I don't get to see it all, so yeah, we just spend a few minutes chatting here at the beginning. So if you're watching the recording, thank you so much for watching, feel free to just pass this part on by. Oh, let's see, um, I'm going to call you Kuka, I can't remember for sure, Kuka? Um, <laughs> I'll get her. Hey, Jan from Quail Hill. Ugly woman is sweet. Oh, no. Oh, no, she's not. The ugly woman is just flat out ugly. There's nothing sweet about that thing. Nothing sweet about that woman whatsoever. <laughs> Carol. Carol loves. She loves the ugly woman. Well, you might be the only one. And Emma always feels sorry for the poor old ugly woman, the poor old thing. Uh, yeah, I feel sorry for her too, because certainly something else was hiding in that wood besides that. I have to tell you, but the carver, the carver couldn't find it. Hi, Kimberly. That's right, Kuka. Okay. You haven't seen the ugly woman in a while. She hasn't changed a bit. She hasn't changed a bit. <laughs> Hi, Christine. You've been super busy. I understand. Uh, Ten minutes for the live notification. Yeah. It's 
sometimes that happens. That's why we spend a little time talking. But thanks for telling me that, Nancy. That's good. <laughs> Emma says, maybe she's beautiful on the inside. Well, I can just hear her voice, and I can just envision the ugly woman's um, state of mind, and I don't think she's probably too pretty inside. I just have a feeling she just might be, yeah, a little... <laughs> A little rough around the edges in every um, aspect. <laughs> we all need an ugly... Sheila says, we all need an ugly woman so we can appreciate how beautiful we are. There you go. <laughs> she might, Linda. She might. She wonders if she smells bad. She might. I haven't gotten that close to her. I haven't gotten that close. Okay, so I'm drinking tea today. I brought this up because I always tell you I'm drinking tea. This is the kind of tea I'm drinking today. guess I should put it over here. So <laughs> It's called Tazo Zen. So if I'm feeling, if I come across particularly Zen today, it's, it's all this the fault of this tea. I like the Tazo teas. So anyway, I just thought I would show you what I was drinking. Sometimes I'm drinking chai, and that's something I usually make myself. Okay, so let me put this away. I'm just trying to fortify my voice. Um, and Claire's drinking Lady Grey. I have not tried Lady Grey. Is that an Earl Grey tea or is that something different? Um, Yvonne's not having tea. She's just having coffee. I'll have a cup of coffee later. I usually have one cup of coffee. Claus Man and I go out, and we've done this for years. We go every afternoon someplace and either have tea or coffee. And we have to change places sometimes because people figure out where we are. And uh, the whole purpose of us going someplace away from home to have tea or a cup of coffee is just so we can talk about stuff. And we used to do it when you know our schedules were very separate and we'd get together and especially when i was taking care of my parents we'd get together and i could talk and listen i have i have cried buckets and buckets of tears in those meetings uh, because then i could leave it there and not and not bring it home with me so yeah i have i have i have probably cried several gallons of tears and left it elsewhere it's much better to leave it someplace else much better to leave it someplace else. Um, <laughs> nothing fatal's happened to this to the said ugly woman. Nothing, no, nothing has happened to her. She's. <laughs> I'll show her to you in a minute. I see her right here. She's always in my eyesight. Um, let's see. Um, it's not okay. Lady Gray is not as bitter as Earl Gray. Okay. It's for ladies. Well, there you go. <laughs> Coverage in Florida is still not great. I bet. I bet. Um, yeah, I bet. I bet. So, first of all, before I do that, let's just um, shout out to everyone in Florida and Houston and any place else that's been severely affected by the hurricanes. We watched that hurricane because it's amazing that you can watch the live coverage of something like that. It amazes me that you can actually watch it on your television. And we watched pretty much all of the coverage for the hurricane that was coming up through Florida um, over the weekend. It was just, it was a stunner. And so my heart goes out to each and every one of you who have tremendous challenges ahead of you and um, I wish you all the best and I hope in some small way that if you're here watching from any of those areas that maybe we can just give you a little bit of a laugh and a break and a distraction so uh, okay so anything else okay I have no idea what you just said, Linda McAllister. Nothing. <laughs> All right. Let me get the said ugly woman. So we have that ready to go.
All right, she'll live over there for a minute. <clears throat> All right, so last week we did, um, the, I did some cards with the Fun Faces rubber stamps. There is still a link down below. Uh, we're down in the 20s now, like 20, less than 25 sets of stamps. And uh, so if you want any of these, you uh, click the link and, and uh, the link is going to be in the description box. So anybody that wants that link or wants stamps, please take advantage of that. We're thinking about doing more rubber stamps, but nothing, um, nothing is in stone yet. So you can let me know if you think that you would like more rubber stamps from me in the chat or you can always send a support ticket um, through the website which is how to get creative.com you can always do that and give me information so okay let's see yes yeah, so let me just it, stop a second and introduce myself I'm Barb Owen of how to get creative.com and how to get creative is a membership website we have classes that go on there lots of classes lots of video classes every class every real class because there's a variety of short and long videos and the longer videos are the classes and all of those include written tutorials and patterns and whatever if, the, if it's appropriate so you're invited to come over and check us out you can check us out for as little as a dollar for a whole month and see if you like it if you don't like it then all you have to do is let us know that that you're not interested in continuing and that's fine um, there are three different subscription levels the trial membership the monthly membership and also the VIP level the VIP level is uh, where people pay for their membership for the year they do get a break on their membership it's not a huge one but it is somewhat of a break and they get some extra perks that go along with it including a live class with me once a month so all right Um, sorry, I just got a message here. Let me deal with this. And so last week we did use the rubber stamps because <clears throat> I've used these in every imaginable way that I can think of. If I think up a new way, I do more. Um, and sorry, I was like. <laughs> squirrel looked at the chat um, so as I've used them on paper and fabric and clay and all different kinds of things so you'll see various videos throughout the YouTube channel and um, they're also included with my doll patterns which are currently not available but they might be again soon who knows all right so let's take a look at the cards the finished cards just so you can see them there's also a blog post that is completed and up for you to be able to see at howtogetcreative.com. You can always go to the blog. Anybody can go to the blog. And um, you'll see the whole blog post. And I tell you the history of the stamps there. It's the very first post that you'll see on the front page of howtogetcreative.com. And so I tell you all about the stamps and the history of them and so forth. Okay. So here is the one of them that we did on the stream and I'm doing this just to show you that her little hat has dimension and this one is done this is the Hannah face and each one of the faces the reason they have a name is because they go with a specific doll pattern and this is the Hannah face and this is the hat and the bodice are made out of fabric that I created painted fabric they're scraps her hair is some sheep's wool locks that I used. Her pa uh, feather is paper. The hat band is fabric paper. And her earrings are punched using just a little paper punch that had a star. So she was almost finished last week, but, you know, I got her on the card base and so forth. And added a border and a few other little things. This face is the Harriet face. And um, sheep's hair. That's right. She has sheep's hair. This is the Harriet face. And so she's hanging off the card. This one would not 
be very easy to put through the mail unless I made a bigger envelope because her shoes are hanging off. But same kind of thing, just um, only her hair is done. This is the one that looked like she had a chakra right in the middle of her forehead, which you can probably still see, or a third eye. <laughs> you can still see it a little bit. Um, I did camouflage it a little bit with pen, pen marks. And um, again, added some little doodles in the corners and a border and so forth. And so she becomes a card. And the background is done with kind of a watercolor technique using acrylic paint. And this is the other one. This is also the Hannah face. So this is the same as this one. But you can tell that they end up being quite different no matter how many times you try to make them the same. They do each have their own personality. Um, and so this is another one. The background's a little bit different. She again has a, a hair or a hat with some dimension. She has a little more hair on this one. This is fabric paper that I made using napkins and um, duck cloth, I think. It's napkins and she's got sparkly paint on her and stuff. Again, scraps, leftover scraps. Fabric paper up here, paper feather, fabric paper for the hat band. This is all, everything on here is scraps, including the faces um, and everything. It was scrap paper. The original inspiration for these came from a long time ago. <clears throat> these were done with as postcards. So this is a four by six postcard. This would never go through the mail because it's hanging off. Um, but this is the original inspiration. You can see my, the text paper more clearly through these. I made them the text paper less visible. You can't really see it unless you're up close on these. And my sound is weird. <clears throat> All right. I don't know what that means. <clears throat> hey, Janet. Hey, Huli. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know what that means. Sorry. Um, and so this is the Harriet stamp or the Harriet face. And, you know, similar to the card, but a little different, a little different size. My voice is different. Yeah, there is a fan blowing. Yeah. Yeah, there is a fan blowing. There's an air conditioner and there is a fan. I'll turn off the fan. Uh, the air conditioner I can't do without because it's really warm here today. So maybe that will help. Okay. Yeah, there is a fan wishing in the background. There is. Okay, so that is, and you can see here on her hair, it's a little different because I notched out the hair on the curls and I gave her longer earrings. These are all paper punches. Yeah, these are all paper punches. And so I used those for the earrings. On this one, I just took out all the little curl bits and gave her some more jewelry and duded up her dress a little bit. So, Okay, so that's what we did last week. So let me put these back in their little home. So I have those in case we decide to revisit this someday somewhere down the road. Okay. So what we're doing this week is it is time for Christmas, people. And I know that's hard for you guys to believe and you don't want to. <laughs> you like the text, the faces on text white paper. Yeah, they work out really well. The ones that I did first, they're a lit, the text is a little more aggressive than I wanted, so. It sounded perfect to you, Nancy. See, you just never know. Hey, Marion. You never know how it, how it works from one person to another. Um, how it comes across, you know. So this, it's almost Christmas time. I know, I know. It's not technically the holidays but what it is is if you are a creative person and you intend to have things ready for the holidays actually I'm way I'm really late doing the Santas this year but we're gonna try we're gonna try and get some done um, so Claus Man is a wood carver hence the name Claus Man and this is one of his 
carvings, and he gets the name Claus Man because he primarily carves a lot of Santas. He, that's not all he does, but that is a lot of what he does. So this is one that is um, a completely finished piece, and each one of the Santas has a name. They get a name, and they get a story. The story is short, but each one has a name, and sometimes the name has to do with um, something that ha that goes with him. Like sometimes we do wire sculpted gems, and we put the incorporate those on the pieces, and then sometimes I'll use the meaning of the whatever the stone is and incorporate that into the name and so forth. Hey, CB. So this one is. Um, I don't know his name. His card is in another room, so I don't remember his name. But he has a little teddy bear, and that is also hand carved. So I'm going to let you see him close so you can see the little teddy bear. So let's put him here so you can see the little teddy bear. So the daddy, teddy bear is also carved, and um, he's in a carved basket. But this little teddy is a tea tiny little guy. He's got stitch marks. I don't know whether you can see, but he has stitch marks. Um, I don't know, maybe you can see down there his foot. See his foot has stitch marks on it. They're they're really pretty detailed. <laughs> they're pretty detailed. And just so you can see, like the back of his costume, he has stars or snowflakes or whatever you'd like to call them. He's one of the more unusual pieces that we've done because he is in a color scheme that is non-traditional. But people who are collectors, and we do have several, um, several people that collect the Santas every year, they like the unusual pieces just because, you know, they have plenty of red ones, you know what I mean? So that's what a finished piece looks like. Here's another one. This one is very tall and um, his tag is on here, so I can read you his story. So this guy is quite tall. He's holding a long stocking, and he's got all kinds of hand cut and painted um, gift boxes around the bottom. I'll give you a close up of the gift boxes so you can see them. And um, so that is this Santa and the stocking. It's difficult to catch it, but he has this in the stocking. He has all kinds of little bitty tiny packages coming out of the stocking. So there is his stocking and the bottom. And let's see if I can. He's so tall. I have to come in sideways on the camera. Let me see. Yeah, I can't really I can't give you any better shot than that because he's so tall. He's really tall. So just to give you an idea of the story, um this is Alden. So I'll hold him up here so you can see him. This is Alden. Alden is an old friend, as his name suggests. When you meet Alden, you'll feel like you've known him forever. Alden's generosity is symbolized by the many Packages that spill from his stocking that stack up around him. He has much to do, but he's never too late to stop by and drink a cup of hot chocolate with you. And then also there's a, a piece that, that comes with them that says each Tiger Claws carving, which is what they're called, uh, creation begins with northern basswood, imagination, and the knives and carving gouges in Claws Man's hands. Once the carving and detailing are complete, each piece is painted and finished by Barb who acts as scribe for the stories whispered to her by each Santa. Once 40 to 60 hours have been invested, each Tiger Claws carving is finished and ready to go to its forever home. So that is Alden. So that gives you an idea of the stories. Sometimes the stories are funny. Sometimes they're, you know, it's whatever shows up at the moment. So they start out as blocks of wood. And this is an example after it has come out of the block of wood and so this is a uh, cowboy santa or i'm thinking that i have two of these that are very similar one of them may be a cowboy santa one of them may be just a cowboy i don't know for sure yet but i love his boots can you see his boots 
he's a cutie uh, so this one has been carved and he does he does minimal sanding on them enough that so that my paint brushes don't get worn to a frazzle um, so that is he is ready for the painting step and he does other things besides Santa's as I told you I didn't bring any of them up here he's done a quarter scale bald eagle he's done quail um, dolphin just trying to think of some of the things eagle heads carousel horses I'm looking an ugly woman um, Native Americans dogs anyway that kind of thing so here is this is a snow person with a snow baby apparently they're going for a walk I love his hat so he's ready for paint they are ready for paint and you'll know it's one of our carvings always I'll show you on the back in a different camera you'll always know it's one of our carvings because it always has the wood burned tiger paw in the wood so yeah the eagle is beautiful more than ugly women yes it's true so there you can see um, the little guy he's got a carrot nose the big guy's got a carrot nose too he's holding the hand of his daddy or his mommy whoever he's with he's a cute one here's another one this one is probably going to end up being steampunked of some kind because he's carrying a something a gear of some kind again you see the emblem on the back so there is another little snow person a snow baby that's right so those are carved and sanded a little bit so they're ready to be moved forward with the painting process uh, this is another this this for those of you that have asked is the ugly woman okay so we'll get this out of the way as quickly as possible <laughs> here is the ugly woman that we speak of mm -hmm. <clears throat> no they're just indoors because they're wood yeah they're wood um, so as you can tell maybe I'm giving you a very close-up um, her chest is hanging out yes it's pathetic <laughs> you'd think who would think the claws man would be able to at least cover her up so sorry I know my computers in the shot but I can't move it any further um, just so you can see the whole thing yes there she is ugly 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 uh, we just sell them by word of mouth yeah I have a I have good intentions of, intentions of getting them on the How to Get Creative website, but there's always something else that takes precedence. Um, yeah, so we sell them by word of mouth. So if you're interested, you can always contact me. The prices range, except for this, this one. <laughs> Poor ugly thing. Look at that face, people. Look at the face. Tell me she's not ugly. Ah! Yeah, Clausman thinks she's beautiful. Yeah, right. Um, no, they cannot be used outdoors because they're wood. They're for indoors only. Yeah. Um, Clausman carved this, so of course he thinks it's beautiful. Although, I think he just does that to taunt me. <laughs> You've seen the ugly woman. She's going away, people. What else was I going to say? Um, yes, the prices range anywhere from three to five hundred dollars for the finished pieces because they're very they're very involved by the time we get them done. Believe me, we don't make any money doing selling them at that anyway, but we do them because we love it. Okay, so the next stage is after the carving is the painting process. And here is an example. These are base coated. Uh, this is time consuming stuff just to get them base coated. Um, <laughs> Debbie Boring, she says, time to do another fun GoFundMe for the ugly woman. Yep, Debbie did that one day. She got 10 cents, I think. Or was it a dollar? <laughs> 
poor old ugly thing. So here's one of um, one of our Santas at the moment who he's just been base coated. This is the very, very beginning of the painting process. And this one's going to be quite ornery. I already know that he's very ornery. If you can see, he, his hand is cupped back here. Can you see that? So I already know what he's going to be doing. Yeah. She needs a facelift and a boob lift. She That's what she needs. Mm-hmm. Poor old ugly thing. Here's another one who is in process. And I'm going to see if I can show you. I'll show you in pieces. So he has a hand carved pipe that goes with him. I love the ones that we almost always do some sort of accessory with them. Sometimes they're pipes or teddy bears or puppy dogs or, um, as I said, the wire wrap, gemstones, and so forth. So he has been base coated as well. And he's ready to be painted. So what we're going to do today, since I got all the base coating done for these two, is I'm going to start painting the faces so that you can see the process of painting the faces. All right, just making sure I've got computers adjusted here. Yeah, I love the pipe too. <laughs> Kuka, take a good look because she's good. Here she is. This is the ugly woman thing. This is the ugly woman. Yeah, here she is with her chest exposed and her yeah, her behind is drooping, her belly is drooping. She is she is not she is not any prize. And she's got some teeth in her head. We do see that. <laughs> yeah, we do see that. Okay, so ugly woman's gonna go over there and mind her P's and Q's. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start painting. So I'm gonna take his pipe out of his mouth. Hello, Frederica. Okay, so base coating, they're all base coated with acrylic paint. And the base coating, all that does is get the, the raw wood covered up and then allows me to have a place to begin. So I'm going to use burnt sienna <laughs> with a bit of paint. She could be nice. Yeah, I don't think so. I think she might be hopeless. Okay, I put out little bits of paint on my palette. This is burnt sienna, and I gotta find my paint brushes here. Here they are. And so my setup is: I have a palette, I have a little bit of paint, I have paint brushes. I usually go through a set of paint brushes every time I paint a lot of these. I have water for my brushes to rinse them out. This has a glop of um, Murphy oil soap in the water so it helps keep the acrylic paint from tearing up my brushes even though they're not expensive. When I'm finished at the end of the day I use pink soap. This is uh, the Mona Lisa pink soap and that's what I clean the brushes in. So that's the setup. A ton of shellac and glitter. That'll fix her up, right? Okay, so let me zoom in as close as I can get, and then I'm going to hopefully be able to do this where you can see. And so I'm going to use my, let's see if this brush will work. I always wet the brush first, and then pick up some paint on the edge of the brush, and then side load the brush. So the paint is blended on the brush before I ever go to the piece. And then I just start painting. So this is, so what you're gonna get to watch is just seeing how the face develops. And I will do my best to keep it in such a way that you can actually see what I'm doing.
So I'm always aware of the edge of the brush that has the paint on it. Because I have only loaded the side of the brush. And I'm always looking at the um, what I've done and I keep a damp, just a damp brush that I'm always chasing away the harsh line of the paint. So often, this doesn't work when I'm doing it live, but often I have one brush in my mouth and that's the one that I'm obviously not using, duh, and the other one that I'm working with. So I'm putting on paint and then blending it in. That's how I do it. And there may be better ways to do this, but this is the way I've done this for many years and it's what works for me, so that's what I do. I've tried lots of other systems of painting and um, always come back to this one, this way of doing it because it works the best. And when I'm doing this, I'm going to have to tell you that I can't watch the chat, so as soon as I get the shading on this brush, on this guy, I'll stop and take questions and so forth if you have questions to ask me, but I can't watch the chat for this and be aware of what I'm doing here because when you do this kind of stuff if you let the edge if you have a stripe of paint and you let it dry with a harsh edge it will always show so Clausman is in the chat if you have questions for him feel free to ask him and another thing that makes this a challenge to do live on the stream is that I have to constantly move it around there's just no way that I can do this in one position so So we'll do the best we can. Okay, and so there is the beginning of his face. So with the shading started, and you always have to watch where the paint's going, because if it goes in the wrong place, it's hard to get it off. So I wasn't watching what I was doing, so I've got a little brown down on his mustache, but we'll take care of that with the next shading step. All right, a little bit more. I've also done the same sort of face stuff on um, plaster ornaments from the craft store. I do have some of those, so there is a recording where I show you the same process done on those plaster ornaments. Okay, let me finish up his mouth. I try to work with the largest brushes that I possibly can. Um, I get the smoothest blend and I have better control so if you see me working with a giant brush and go what in the world that's why 
I learned to do that when I was taught how to paint years ago and um, the rule was to always use the largest brush you could. Now maybe that's not the rule today but that was the rule when I was taught so All right, so there you can see the beginning of the painting. Okay, just touching up some color as I see. You can see I've got some, some uh, of the brown paint down here on his mustache, so it looks like he's had a problem, but we'll fix him. Okay. So let me see if we have questions here. Um, hi, Shu. Sorry, just looking here. Okay. All right. So I've caught up on the chat. And we're going to move because now at this point, this, this coat of paint has to dry, which it's a very thin coat of paint, but it has to dry. So that's why I have two of them, so I can work back and forth. And this is what I usually do. I usually will base coat a whole bunch of them at one time, which I only had time to get two of them ready. And so I'll have two of them, or I'll have sometimes, if I have as many as six or seven, ready to go that is ideal because then by the time I get one finished uh, with one step uh, there the first one I did is done and ready to go for the next step okay I've got some crud in my paint here that is the disadvantage with working with craft paint is that sometimes you get some bits of stuff, but I have tried all different kinds of paints. I used to do these in oils. That was a nightmare, but that's what I did for a long time, use the oil paints, because that's what I knew, um, until I finally realized, taught myself how to do it in such a way with acrylics that I could get a look I was happy with and um, I've tried it with tube paints I've tried you know all different kinds of things and I always come back to these because I have the colors that I like I have the paints the specific brands of paints of certain colors that I like and so I always come back to the craft paints and once they're varnished and we put several coats of varnish on them. Once they're varnished, they um, I've had many of them for years and years and years. Like some of them I've had for probably 30 years that were painted with craft paints and I have never ever had any issue with them whatsoever. So if it ain't broke, don't go about trying to fix it. Okay, so let's keep going here. So you can see I'm using little short strokes. Acrylic paint is funny paint. It gives you a certain amount of time, no matter if it's artist acrylic or if it's craft paint or what it is, you have a certain amount of time to manipulate it and then you better leave it alone. So I work pretty quickly when I'm putting the paint down. The process is slow, but the application of paint is pretty fast. Which may not make any sense, however, that's the way it is. But I have tried all kinds of ways to do these over the years, to paint them and so forth, and I always come back to the same system because it works. As I said, you got to get to a point where you go, it's not broken, don't try and fix it. Leave it the way it is and go with what works. 
Is mine the only way to do this? Absolutely not. Sorry if I get out of the shot every once in a while. I'm really trying to watch both the monitor and um, the Santa. The initial color that is on his face is called Santa's Flesh, believe it or not. have no idea whether they make that color anymore. For a while I couldn't find it. And uh, then I remembered that I had stockpiled a whole bunch of it. So I was worrying about it for nothing because I've got enough Santa's Flesh to last me probably for my lifetime as long as it doesn't go bad on me, which is always a possibility with any kind of paint. So what happens when I do these streams is I end up just rattling and talking because I, it's very hard for me to watch the chat. So every so often I stop and that's when I catch up with the chat. I used to do these a lot on uh, late night shows. When I was broadcasting on Ustream, I used to do a lot of this late at night and uh, I just don't have time to do that much anymore. But anyway, there is the other one. This specific color that I'm using is a folk art color. I use a number of different brands, but this specific color is a folk art color, and it's folk art burnt sienna. That's the color. And again, I don't know whether they even make this this um, specific one any longer. But that's what he looks like when he has been um, shaded. Okay, so any questions that I missed? Okay. Hey, Carissa. Um, all right, so the next step is we'll go back to this one because he's probably, he's probably dry. Um, I think he is. I'm going to hit him with a little bit of heat from a heat gun just to make sure, which I normally don't do when I'm not uh, streaming, but we're going to hit him with a little bit of heat, so here we go. Okay, so the next color, I do the cheeks next, so the next color I'm going to use is, um, and these are just the colors that I happen to like for the faces. This is a Ceramcoke color, and it's tomato spice, and it just happens to be the color I like. It's the same color that the coat is on this one. I've tried all different kinds of red reds, and this is the one I like the best for the Santas. Um, so. As I said, I don't don't mess around with it. Just use what works. So again, I'm going to side load the brush. So here is my palette, and um, I'm using the same big old fat brush, making sure that it is it has to be wet, but not too wet. So I pat off most of the moisture. And then I blend the brush until I just have just a little bit of color on the brush. Making sure I have my other brush beside me in case I'm when I'm ready for it. And I put on his cheeks right over the um, shading. So it's got cheeks. 
And I come up over his nose because he's got because it's cold out. <clears throat> and down around the other cheek. And sometimes I have to do this more than once because it depends on um, what the color does when it dries. Because sometimes the color changes as it dries. But they're Santas and so they have to have lots of rosy cheeks. Okay, and then I like to carry that color down onto his little mouth. These are very inex whoops, gotta use the brush end, not the handle end to paint with. Uh, these brushes are very inexpensive. When I find brushes that I like, I usually buy several sets of them because it's easy to ruin brushes when you're painting on wood. And I would rather put on a second coat rather than to try to go too heavy because, um, yeah, too heavy and you're asking for trouble. Now because he has a pipe in his mouth, he's going to need to have that part of his mouth in here it needs to be very dark. So I'm going to go back to the Burnt Sienna with a tiny little brush and I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to just make sure that's good and dark back in there. Okay, so there is his little face at the moment. So we'll see how he looks as we go. They look pretty rough for a while. And that's just the way, that's the nature of the beast. They still make that color? Okay. Great. Like I said, I have a lifetime supply of most of these colors because... Um, I like them. When you put that that Santa's flesh over wood, it barely looks any different than the color of the raw wood, but it makes a huge difference in the way that the paint blends. If you don't have acrylic paint to start with, uh, down on the surface of the wood, the paints don't blend. They just soak in. And so you got to have, I have to have an acrylic base under before I start adding layers of layers of color over it. So that's, and I found that if I start too dark, like I started out, when I very first started doing them, I used a medium flesh color. And by the time I got the shading on them and everything, they looked like they had been through a mud bath. So you have to, you have to find what colors work for you, depending on the wood and so forth. So, putting his cheeks on. And then quickly coming back and blending anything that, so I don't end up with any harsh edges. I don't worry too much about what's going on where it meets the white because that all gets shaded later. The white beard all gets shaded so it goes away later. But sometimes with the wet paint you can get it, you know, tracking down through the grooves of the beard and that. And so you want to stop that. You don't want to let the paint. You can't let the paint. You got to be the boss of the paint. You can't let the paint go where it wants to go. You got to be the boss. Tell it where to go. 
Okay, so a little red down here in his little mouth. And again, make sure that there aren't any harsh lines left behind. Now, bear in mind that I'm zoomed in super close here. So what you're seeing at this distance is like no one will ever see these this close up. Okay. All right. So washing out my brush. So let me show you while these dry, I'll put a coat of the Santa's flesh on some of the raw wood ones. So you can see what it looks like against the raw wood, just so you can see. So this is the color. It's Ceram Coat Santa's Flesh. So we'll do a quick, we'll base coat this guy's face. Normally my painting procedure is I will do their faces and um, then I will do the rest of the Santa because the face, <clears throat> the face is what dictates the personality for me and, um, and it's interesting that when we collaborate on pieces that often uh, Clausman will have one vision and I'll have another. And um, because I'm the one that has the final thing with the painting, um, he has to adapt to me a lot of times <laughs> just because. Okay, so you can see the color of the raw wood. And this is the color of Santa's flesh. So it is almost the same thing as the raw wood. But for me, that's the color that works. So... And I am trying to make sure that every nook and cranny of the um, paint of the carving gets coated in paint. And as I said, I'm constantly turning them upside down and right side up and all other manner of direction because I'm always using the light to show me where Clausman uses the light to show him the shadows when he does the carving. I use the light to show me what where the places are where I didn't have paint. And um, so I'm constantly turning it and looking for places, you know, the, the light to show me where I've missed something. And acrylic paint is something that you have a limited amount of time to use. It starts setting up very quickly. You want to keep your brushes um, wet. You don't want the paint to set up and dry inside your brush. Because if you do, um, you're going to have to work pretty hard to get it out. And because these brushes are inexpensive, I don't, if I ruin a brush, I ruin a brush. I throw it away and go again because these are inexpensive. If these were really expensive brushes, that might be different. Okay, so there is his face base coated. His mouth is not, so you can see a slight difference. You can see a slight difference in the color of the wood to the flesh tone, but not much. His mouth is pretty little, so I'm just going to use this tiny little brush and just put the paint on with it. And the reason I'm doing this is to give those other faces a chance to dry. Okay, so there is, and he's tall, so I can't stand him up very straight, but there he is base coated. Okay. 
Okay, so let's, I have one more. cowboy type Santa and I'm gonna go ahead and just base coat him while I got the paint out because why not and then by that time the first two should be dry enough I can move on so that is how I approach the faces on the Santas And if I'm only working on one piece, um, I'll work back and forth. I'll do a step on the face and then I'll do something on the garment or the um, some other part of him. My preference is to get all the faces done or all the base coating done. I do like working in a, a more methodical way when I'm doing them um, because I just feel like I've I'm accomplishing something. He's got a hair. Got it. He had a rogue hair known as uh, carving something or other. A little piece of wood. So we had to get it. We had to de we had to de hair him. We had to get out the tweezers, people. And to get out the tweezers. If your paint starts to get sticky, um, I just use water. I've tried using flow mediums and retarders and all kinds of stuff. I always come back to just using water. It's my, you know, just use what works. So I'm tipping it in the light so I can see the reflection of the light against the paint. I steady my hand with my little finger against whatever I'm doing. That's what steadies my hand. And that's how it works for me. But as I said, everybody who does this finds a way that works for them and whatever way works for you. That's what you ought to do. So I'm just painting, I mean this is a pretty big brush. I'm just painting with the corner of it to get the color on. And if I've got any big globs of paint, I just bring, get a damp brush and just make sure they're blended out. So there's the second one. It was not a sponsor hair. It was a it was a wood splinter that the carver missed. Oh, I know. Can't imagine that would happen. <laughs> Doesn't happen very often. But leaving that hair on his face might have been ugly. Hi, Patty. Good to see you. Okay, so I'm looking at the chat. If anybody has questions, pop them in there. Um, the problem with doing other seasons for us is that I'm busy enough that I don't have time to... He could carve them, but I don't have time to paint them. So they would just you know other things would just languish waiting <laughs> for me to paint them sometimes I don't get any painting done from one year to the next so like last year I didn't get any Santa's painted at all so we're catching up a little bit this year alright so we're gonna go back to these guys alright um, and I'm going to um, put a little bit of white back on this mustache where I got
color slop down on the mustache just so that it doesn't dictate what color I use to shade it because sometimes I use various colors. So I'm going to put a little bit of, this is light ivory, so I'm going to put that back in there and just let that dry so that cleans up that mess that I made under his nose. Um, Hi Ray, nice to see you. Okay, so now we're going to go to um, his, start on his eyes. And so what I am going to use, since I have it out, I'm going to use the light ivory because that's one of my favorite colors. For I don't like the stark white, so I always use a little bit of an off-white. But I don't like antique white. I'm very, very picky about the stuff I use. <laughs> I'm very opinionated about what I like. There you go. All right, so uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work with a tiny little, tiny little brush. Um, I have a, again, I have a whole bunch of these brushes that I got years ago. This is, let's see if I can show it to you. I don't think I can zoom in any further. It's an Eagle Millennium. Um, yeah, there's a number on it. Cost three dollars and ninety-five cents, but I've had these for probably fifteen years or more. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, eyebrows on him. So hopefully you can see. So I just use a glop of paint. And those of you that were here last week saw me do eyebrows on the the Fun Faces stamps. And I do them the same way. I do not do one smooth line. Santa would have bushy eyebrows, I'm pretty sure. So I do them the same way. Little short strokes. I don't like them to be too neat and tidy. He is far too busy to be super well groomed. Okay. Move my water bucket out of the way. Okay, so he has eyebrows. And sometimes I come back and adjust them a little bit. They don't have to be identical, but they have to look like they came, like they belong kind of on the same guy. Good enough. All right, then I put in his eye. So we start the eye process. They go through lots of stages. Sorry, I'm trying to do this where you guys can see it and where I can see it. Not always easiest thing in the world.
Okay, and so there's the beginning of his eyes. So he looks pretty creepy for a little bit. Okay, eyes are started. Eyebrows. And I just let the, the wood dictate how they come out. I have found that if I try to fight these and try to make them into something that I want them to be, um, it's like making a doll. They will win every time. It is uh, not a good idea to argue with a wood carving or a doll. They will win every time. Any kind of figure that you're trying to work with something that already has a form, don't argue with it. Don't argue. Bye, Kuka. Um, yes, we do sell them. I have good intentions of putting them on the website. Um, I might or might not get that done. But you can always either leave, send me a private message here on YouTube or you can contact me on Twitter or you can send in a support ticket and to do that just go to howtogetcreative.com you'll see the support ticket tab right there at the side of every page you'll see there is a support ticket tab fill it out and I'll get back to you if you have questions so there is the beginning of an eye We have very few pieces at the moment. And as I said a minute ago, I have no idea how many I'll get done this year. Sometimes I get several. Some There have been years where I've done 20 pieces, but not very often. Usually it's just a few. And I, we only do them once a year. Only once a year. Because I have enough other things going on with the website that there just aren't enough hours in the day, if you know what I mean. Okay, so there's the beginning of his. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit these both of these with a heat gun to see if I can get them dry enough to go on. You want to be sure when you're drying acrylic paint, I don't know if you can see, I'm moving, see the heat gun waving? I am waving that over. You don't ever want to put your heat gun straight down on acrylic paint because it will bubble it. It'll cook it. And if that's an effect you're after, it's perfect. And it's how you get it. But if you are doing something like this, you definitely don't want to do that. Bye, Linda. Good to see you. So you're just watching me wave the heat gun over the surface. Okay. 
Okay, probably good enough. Okay, so we're gonna go with blue eyes, which is frequently the color I use. Sometimes I use turquoise. Today, I'm using whispering turquoise because that just seemed like that was the color I wanted to use. And I'm gonna put in the iris of his eyes. And I like to offset them so he's looking to the side. Because that's just what I like. So guess what? That's what he gets. Okay, and so there is, there are the pupil, or the irises of his eyes. When you look at things upside down, your eye will pick up whether things are even or look okay. They might not have to be exactly the same, but your eye will tell you when you look at something upside down whether they look okay or not when it comes to things like eyes. Okay, so there are the pupils in his eyes. Not the pupils, sorry, the irises. <laughs> Dorothy can't look till the eyes are done. I understand. All right. While his eyes are drying, I'm going to go back to beneath his eyes, and I'm going to give him some eye bags. Let me see if my burnt sienna is still usable. It is. So we've got... I'm going to side load the brush again. Okay, it's not usable enough. Got to go back and get some fresh paint. That's why I use tiny little, tiny little dots of paint. Tiny, tiny little dots of paint because it dries up, it sets up quickly, and yeah, doesn't work very long. So, side loading the brush again. Brush is barely damp. And underneath his eyes, I'm going to give him an eye bag. Because it will help with his expression down the road. So it may not make sense to you at the moment, but yeah. Helps with expression. So he's got some bags under his eyes, which is what we're after.
Helps give him some wrinkles under his eyes to give him a little bit more expression. Hello, May. Okay, back to heat gun. go to black. This is Americana Ebony Lamp Black. And this is putting the pupil in. Okay, so his eyes are looking a little goofy at the moment. He'll come together here in a little bit. Needs a little bit more iris on this one. You paint, you make corrections, and you paint, and you make corrections. All right, so there are his eyes. Nope, never argue with the Santa, that's right. Bye, Dana. Good to see you. All right, again with the heat gun.
Okay, I like to put in a little tiny tear duct in the corner of the eyes. And I usually do that with the uh, tomato spice red. I don't introduce a lot of different colors when I'm doing this. I work with the same colors throughout the face rather than introduce new colors as we go through the process. You always have to make sure that your hands are clean too. Otherwise, you more than once I have transferred color from something from one part of the Santa to a part that I didn't want at all. And then have to go in and make corrections. That's annoying. Okay, tear duct in the corner of the eye. It's just a little red triangle or dot. Triangle if I can make it. There is just something about that little red triangle that you shouldn't be able to pick it up when you look at what I do. You shouldn't really be able to see it, and yet it does make a big difference. Okay, so I have a little red dot in the corner of his eyes. Hopefully you can see him. And then we'll come to this one. Okay, good enough. He's got his little red tear ducts in there. And then I do finish him up with some line work, which I have to wait until it is bone dry to be able to do it. And I finish the line work up with um, um, pens, felt tip pens, like the Micron pens. So what we're going to do here is just put the sparkle dots in his eyes. So I'm using white paint. So this is snow, pure white. I put the sparkle dot between the pupil and the iris. And that gives him the impression you can see that he's looking someplace. Now the, eye, the line work makes a big difference. I'll show you one that's finished so you can see the difference that the line work makes. But as I said, you have to wait till it is bone dry to do that. So I won't be able to do that until later tonight. So you can see now he looks like he's actually looking someplace. Hi Cheryl. Nice to have you join us. So, for example, if you look at this one, he has, he has all the steps that I just showed. I've got him laid down kind of sideways because he's so tall I can't stand him up. But he has line work at the top and the bottom of his eyes. Also, the iris is outlined and so forth. And then I'll usually go back and put more shading right above the eye under the eyebrow. And that just um, sets the eyes more into the back into the head. So that's what I'll do to finish the eyes. But other than that, you can see all the rest of the steps right there. So we've done all the rest of the steps. 
Okay, so um, what happens after the face is completed, we'll do a little bit of work on the beard here, and then we'll call it, we'll probably call it a day. So let me get a color that I want to use for his beard. Let's see. I think maybe we'll just use a brown. Hi, Beth. Okay, so I have a little bit of burnt umber. And if my paint's still good, we're going to combine it with a lighter brown, which is called Trail Tan, but we'll see. It may or may not. Looks like it's not. So we'll try Americana Fawn. It's about the same color. So I'm just going to put them side by side on my palette here. So they're right here. And what I'm going to use is my big brush and I'm going to get a little bit of the tan and a tiny little bit of the burnt umber. Mix them together, maybe a little bit more like so. So I've got this a color that's in between these two colors. And then I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to start shading next to the face. And I can't go very far before I have to stop and make sure that I don't have any edges drying in a way that I don't like. And then I go some more. So I'm painting with the corner of the brush that has the paint on it where I want that to go. That is where that I'm directing the paint. And then just making sure that my paint um, doesn't dry with a dry edge. That way I keep it blended. And if you get, if I get too wet, if the paint's too wet, which I've got going on right here, then I have to just be really super careful that I pick up all the extra wet stuff. And again, don't let that dry with a stripe of color, which may not make any sense to you, but it's important. Otherwise, you end up with a stripe of brown someplace, and you're like, what is the, where did that come from? And if I get too much brown shading on the beard, then I come back over the top of it and I highlight it later. So sometimes it's a play between dark and light, you know, shadow and light. It's like, nope, that was too much, got, went too far. And I have to come back and uh, highlight back over the top of it.
some uh, wood carvers will base coat their pieces with, you know, as I did to start with. So everything has just had the um, one coat of paint on it. And then they'll come back over the top of it with something like shoe polish. And they'll paint the whole thing with shoe polish or dark brown acrylic or oil or whatever they're working with. And then they'll take a rag or something and they'll, they'll uh, wipe out the highlights. And I don't like that personally because I, um, I like being able to choose the colors that I'm using for the shadows. So I, you know, you saw me use all kinds of colors on the face and I'll use various colors on the beards. So I personally don't care for that, but some, you know, some people really like that. So it's all a matter of personal preference. So a little bit of shading in the eyebrows, not much, just a little bit so that they're not quite so stark white. And then I use usually whatever the color is that I've used for the beard, I'll use on the rest of the white trim and so forth. but making sure that I control how much paint goes down and where it goes and what color it is. I think of it as a dance. It's kind of a dance between the color and the brushes and the Santa and his demands. Because as I already told you, he will win. I don't argue with them. Some of the Santas in the past I've painted with like a cheetah, cheetah fur trim around their garments. I really like those. I really like that. But the shading just tends to give it character and dimension. So here's one. This one has nothing on the beard. Okay, he has nothing. And this one has the shading on the beard. So you can see quite a difference. Okay. Um, Beth, if you contact me either with a uh, direct message here on YouTube or you can send me a direct message on Twitter or fill out a support ticket on the website howtogetcreative.com any of those ways you can get in touch with me okay um, so we'll say that that's good on his face for the moment so we'll come down on his um, garment now, all of this white has to have the same thing done. So everything has to be shaded. His belt has to be done. His mittens will have to be done. Let's do a mitten. Let me get a dark green.
Okay, so let's do a mitten. The process is the same, it's just change colors. I side load the brush just like I did for everything else. Blend it on the palette so that I've got a very super soft blend only on one side of the brush. And then can be very conscious of where that dark color is. So that the dark color goes exactly where I intend for it to go which is at the edges. As you can see, this is not great streaming um, streaming uh, material because it doesn't move very fast. So, but I just thought that maybe you would like to see the process because it is something that we do. It's something different. Maybe some of you are not aware of the fact um, that this is something that we do. Don't do it very much, that's for sure. And you can see now that I've changed the color of this mitten. You see, it has a difference, it has a brighter, more uh, defined shape, maybe, than this one, which just, it's just flat. The color is just flat versus this one where the color is. I don't know how much you're going to actually see, but. It does make a difference in real life, as we say. And sometimes if the, um, the parts of the Santa are really dark, then I will shade with a light color. So you don't always have to go dark with your shading colors. You just have to be in a contrast. Use a contrasting color. Always being aware of the edge of the color so you don't dry with a stripe. And that happens so quickly can't dilly-dally around too long. Always being aware. Always watching. Kind of like Santa. Always watching. Always watching. Alright, so that is what his little mitten looks like. And if it needs more once that dries down, sometimes I have to go back and do it again, just depending on how the end result appears. We'll do a little bit of his garment and so we'll go with I'm going to use some cranberry wine. I like a really dark red. I'll probably have to put a little bit of burnt umber in with it in order to get enough contrast that it will actually show on his um, on his coat, on his garment. 
So again, picking up the red, blending it on the palette. I'll put a little bit of burnt umber in with it. One of my very favorite colors for shading red was called Fingerberry Red. And they discontinued, they did discontinue that color. So I've had to kind of come up with a color that will work. It's a very deep brownish burgundy red. Always taking care of anything that looks like it's going to dry with a, with a hard edge or a hard line. And always working with the biggest brushes that I can work with because I get the smoothest blending that way. And you go until you've got a logical stopping place. Uh, when you start the shading process, you have to go, you can't just stop in the middle of something because if you do, it will show when you come back to try to pick it up. So you've got to go um, to a logical stopping place. For example, like here at the back part of the arm, back here, right there, I could stop there if I needed to. Um, you know, answer the phone or talk to somebody or what have you. There have been many times somebody's tried to talk to me when I was doing this stuff and I'll say, give me a minute, give me a minute. Because you got to go to um, the place that you're not going to mess yourself up, make yourself more trouble down the road, you know? And the shading step takes care of any little white specks that you might have missed. Uh, when you're, when you do the base coat work, because no matter how much I look in the light and tip it and see this little, I don't know if you can tell, there's a little white speck right there. It's just where I miss getting the paint. And so by having the shading, I can pick up all those little white specks because the place where you really see those are um, between colors where the colors change. That's where you really pick those up and see that you just totally missed something. Your brush has to be, it's a Goldilocks thing, your brush has to be wet enough but not too wet to do this. And it's, uh, it is a real dance between the paint and the timing. And we're just back about back around where we started here. I've used gold leaf on some, some of them in the past. Um, 
I've made, we've made our own stamps and I've stamped with sizing and then gone in with gold leaf to uh, paint whatever it was that I'd stamped on the garment. I truly do whatever the Santa seems to think he wants. Okay, so I don't know how well you can see that, but this side is quite different from this. This looks very flat. When you get the shading on them, um, hopefully you can see the difference between this side of the coat and this side. Uh, it's just called, it really is just called side loading you just side load the brush. It's called, sometimes people call it floating, floating the color. So you're floating the color. Sometimes people refer to it as glazing, although I think glazing is more of adding color over pretty much the entire surface of something as opposed to this little, you know, kind of meticulous way of putting it exactly where you want the color. I think this is more of a floating, I think that's what acrylic painters would call it. I just think of it as shading. And sometimes you'll see imperfections in the wood. For example, there is a little imperfection in the wood right here. Let's see if I can see it right there. And there's nothing the the shading color will pick up because of that imperfection. And you have to be okay with that uh, because that's just what happens. You know, that is just what happens. It's you're dealing with something that was a, a uh, an organic, it's an organic material. So you have to be okay with what happens on some things like that and go, yeah, in a perfect world, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be dealing with that. Well, it's not a perfect world. <laughs> it's not a perfect world. If it were, we'd make it out of plastic and we'd have it, um, It wouldn't be made out of an organic material like wood. That's what I'm trying to say. You got to be able to work with what the wood gives you. I know sometimes when Claus Man carves these, he'll be um, sitting over there carving and he'll encounter a goofy part in the wood and the knife or the gouge will just go exactly where it wants to go. And then he either has to make something out of that or, you know, he's going to have to work around it in some form or fashion because it's just the, what the wood it's just what the wood does, you know? Hello, Patricia. Nice to see you. And you're not late. You're right on time. Whatever time you get here, you're right on time. And sometimes my brushes just sort of um, go the direction that they want to go. And deposit color someplace that I didn't have it planned on. And then you got to figure out what to do with that. That's why a damp brush is usually hanging out in my mouth because I can grab it. Now the danger of putting a, a damp brush in your mouth is that you could accidentally put 
the painty end of a paintbrush in your mouth or up your nose. That's happened before too. That's no good. That is no bueno. One of my painting teachers one time when I was doing oil painting, taking oil painting from her, and um, she'd gone to a, some kind of class someplace, and it was in the South, and my painting teacher was somebody that didn't take herself very seriously or anything, and she was, whatever she was painting, she went to scratch her nose with the handle end of her paintbrush, only it wasn't the handle end of her paintbrush, it was the brush end, and it was loaded with paint, and she missed her nose and stuck it straight up her nostril. And the lady sitting next to her looked at her and says, My word, you just stuck that paintbrush straight up your nose. <laughs> and she, the lady sitting next to her didn't see it to be nearly as funny as my painting teacher did. She thought that was, because as I said, she didn't take herself too seriously. My word, you just stuck that paintbrush full of paint right up your nose. Well, sure enough, I did. Okay, so keeping aware of where you have been painting, you have to keep an eye on where you've been painting and how quickly something has dried. Because if you're not, you're going to be um, getting your hand in something you just did and probably wipe it out and have to redo it. And believe me, redoing things with acrylic paint is never as fun as doing it right the first time. Never as good as it is the first time. Because they tend to, no matter how much you try to camouflage something, you tend to, they tend to leave harsh lines which is why you see me working with that brush all the time. And a brush full of oil paint up your nose is not good, let me tell you. Okay, so we're just about to get a chunk of this knocked out. Once you start on this, you know, it's like, okay, I'm just going to go this little bit more and this little bit more because I want to just see it, you know, I just want to see this part done. And then the next thing you know, I'm painting at 3 o'clock in the morning. Because I just want to get this one little bit more done, you know? Okay, so I'm going to show you this right here. This is where, see that? I got red paint up on his mitten. That is what I'm talking about. When you're not watching what you're doing closely enough, and you have to go back and fix things. Yeah. 
that's the kind of thing that as long as I've done this I still still can make a mistake Our neighbors next door got a brand new golden doodle puppy. Oh my goodness. If that is not the sweetest little puppy in the world. She's 10 weeks old. Her name is Sophie. So Muppet has a new friend. So yes, we're trying to stay away <laughs> so that I don't so that neither of us get the bug for wanting a puppy but if she isn't the cutest thing on the planet I don't know what is she's a miniature golden doodle so her the poodle Heart was a miniature poodle, so she's not going to be very big. Oh, she is so cute. Super active, super puppy. And they've, um, he's never had a dog before, so this is a whole learning experience for the, for the guy. All right, let's see if we can come back here. As I see things dry, then I then I become aware of what has to be touched up. Where I've missed something. All right, let's go back to this mitten and see if I can straighten up what I screwed up. without making myself even more work. Okay, that should do it, but if I have to, I'll come back over it and give it another coat. Might need one more coat to just smooth it out. So hopefully what you can see now is you can see most of the red. I'll point out what has not been shaded. This part of the coat and this arm have not been shaded. The rest of the coat has been and this part has not been. Okay, let me back out a little bit. See if maybe you can see it. So this part of the coat here has not been done. This part has, this has, this has not, this has, his hat hood has been done. It just, I don't know whether you can tell it or not from where you are, but it makes a big difference. I don't know whether you can tell or not but anyway okay so having gotten that far we're gonna stop there so you kind of see the process of um, how to do that and how to do how I do the faces and so forth as I said the line work has to come when it is con completely dry if you try to rush the line work like using a um, heat gun and drying the acrylic paint and using heat gun to um, to dry the paint it won't work it will not work you'll just end up killing your 
your felt tip brushes or your felt tip pens. So I'm just putting some pink soap in my brushes. I've got it in my hand and I'm just putting the pink soap in the brushes. That will save them until I can get, you know, really use it under running water. That will just save everything from killing my brushes. And then I'll clean them up later. The golden doodles are just something else, I'm telling you. Ugh. I'd never been around them before, and I've not been around an adult golden doodle, so yeah, I'm not quite sure what she'll be like when she grows up, but um, hopefully we'll get to see her. She's about, she's about this big now. She's just adorable. Okay, so let me get stuff out of the way. Of course, we have to let the sponsors out because without the sponsors, there is no show because, you know, where would I be without sponsors? <laughs> They are called the sponsors, in case you've never been here before. They're two big fat Siamese cats. And they're called the sponsors because uh, they let me stream, usually. Okay, so let me get them, and we will call it a day. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate your time. So, sponsor time. Hello, hello, hello. Are you ready to come out? Are you ready to come out because you're so tired of being in there? You are hot. He's been laying in the sunshine. Sponsor number one assumed his position. Yep, he assumed his position because that's what he does. And um, this is Chance. Oh, your eyes are all cruddy. Wait, wait you're, you're not presentable to the world, man. You were looking bad there for a minute. I had to give him a spit bath, like my mom used to do. Yeah, Charlie is apparently in the sun puddle. So he's apparently not going to come and join his friend. This is Chance. And uh, so, yeah. It was fun hanging out with you. Okay, Beth, that's fine. Um, hey. It's fun hanging out with you guys. Thank you so much for being here on a Drama Free Friday. Of course, we call it Drama Free Friday because we just take a break from the world for a couple of hours and just pretend that it doesn't exist. <laughs> and sometimes that's what you got to do. All right. So thank you so much for being here, everyone. I will see you next week. Um, don't know what we'll do, but it's usually something different each week. And um, I'll have these finished. I don't know if I'll get them both finished and time to write the blog post about them but I'll uh, I'll do my best so hopefully you'll see them before long and they they take another big change they go through another big change once the um, once the varnish coats go on it they look very very different so yeah don't know how much you can tell from your end but they look completely different than when they get all their varnish coats and all that and all these little pieces like this the teddy bear on this one was carved separately and uh, then he had to be varnished and all that before he could be put in the basket so lots of moving not necessarily moving pieces but lots of pieces on them okay any last questions I don't see anything oh thanks CB thanks G Okay, we're going to call it a day. Thanks for being here, everybody. Remember to get creative today because you know it's easy. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.